suggestions. So today we're gonna do one of those suggestions. We're gonna make a homemade hibachi grill, cook some chicken, and we're gonna see if we can't set it on fire with some Fritos this time. And don't miss the end of this thing where we reveal a hundred year old recipe. We're gonna make a Dutch oven peach cobbler. It's gonna be delicious, so stick around. You are not gonna to wanna to miss this. There's our Dutch oven. We got about 20 charcoal briquettes ready to light up. We're gonna put those in a chimney and check out today's project. We're going to make ourselves a homemade hibachi. Pretty simple process here. We got uh, four fire bricks and we're probably going to put five or six charcoal briquettes in there and then we will lay these chicken skewers right across here. This is going to be a delicious southern delicacy peach cobbler in a Dutch oven. And here are all our ingredients. And by the way, we are using Royal Oak supersized charcoal briquettes. So just to confirm, we are not using match light charcoal. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 briquettes here. And we're going to put about six more right there. The Dutch oven will sit right on top of that. And this will cook our cobbler while we create a homemade hibachi chicken. We're going to start things off with some Fritos. We're going to use a charcoal chimney this time. So the chimney, we're going to set that right on top of these Fritos. I'm pretty sure it's going to work. Yeah, it works. Tastes good too. All right, let's do this. Fritos. Looks like they're pretty much just as flammable as the Doritos. We'll see if we can't start a pile of them. Burn, baby, burn. Disco Inferno. <laughs> this is fun too, people. Hey, you know what? If you watched this far, we sure do appreciate it. I would really like it if you would click that like button, smash that subscribe button, and watch this thing all the way to the end. We'll even put up a video up in that corner for you in a little bit. But you know what? There's a new button down there called Thanks. You can give us a super thanks. And I really appreciate every man and woman who's serving, wherever that might be, serving in whatever capacity to keep this whole world safe. You know what? I know we got a lot of viewers out there that are not even in the United States. We got shout outs from our friends in Korea, Australia, Canada, India, Germany, the U.S., all over the world, man. Thank you so much for watching. We really do appreciate your support. Now, let's get back to cooking. Let's get our peach cobbler ready to go, get it all mixed up. We got a mixing bowl here. We're gonna do what we call a cuppa. Let me know if you've ever heard of a cuppa cobbler. It's gonna be a cup of milk, a cup of sugar, and a cup of flour. So we're gonna put in our cup of flour. I've already measured that, and guess what? That's a cup of flour. We're gonna use these peaches right here. Guess where these peaches came from? These are South Carolina peaches, hand-picked and put away by my parents down in South Kakalaki. So thanks mom and dad for supplying the peaches on this great family recipe and passing down the recipe itself. So cup of flour, cup of sugar, cup of milk. But you know what? We don't really like to use sugar. So we're gonna use this instead. And yes, as a conversion chart right there and a half a cup of this is just as good and better for you than a cup of sugar. We want to taste the peaches too. We don't want it so sugary sweet. 
In fact, I don't think I'm even going to use a half a cup. That looks good to me right there. And we're going to melt a whole stick of butter in that Dutch oven right there. And then we're going to get all this incorporated, including the peaches. And it's going to take about 40, 45 minutes to do this. And give it a whisk. Now, a cobbler is different than a cake, and cobbler is different than a pie. And it's going to have its kind of its own consistency. It'll have you know, a little bit of brown on top, and a little good bit of a nice gooeyness to it. And you can make this so easy. You can make this in the house in like a, I guess, a 9 by 9 or a 9 by 13 Pyrex dish, but it's more fun to do it in a Dutch oven. And you get to do cook outside. I can't believe how well the handful of Fritos get your charcoal going. Look at that. Look at all the oil that came out of those things. Meanwhile, let's go ahead get this Dutch oven ready by putting in our stick of butter. That was easy. You know what? You can kind of smear all that around. Got to make sure nothing sticks. So we're going to put our charcoal right up under there. That butter's already starting to dance. But you can see we got our melted butter there. Our belted mutter. Ooh, I love me some belted mutter. How about you? Here we go with our mixture. We want to get this in. And then the fruit goes on top. It'll sink down, don't worry. I know I've watched a lot of people cook their versions of peach cobbler on YouTube. Ovens, Dutch ovens, you name it. Some of them use cake mix. That's okay. You want a cakey texture. That's not a cobbler to me. So let's put our peaches in there. You can move it around a little bit if you want. Spread it out. Make sure we get some goodness all in there. Have some peaches on the edge too. Now we're gonna give this a little bit of vanilla extract. Maybe about a teaspoon, tablespoon. Gosta, gosta, gosta have some cinnamon. Cinnamon goes in there. Cinnamon and peaches go good together. Much cinnamon as you like. Secret ingredient, a little dash of nutmeg. And a little nutmeg goes a long way, so it doesn't take much. We'll set a timer for about 20 minutes. And we'll rotate this thing, make sure we get an even distribution of heat in about 20 minutes, and then we'll go another 20 minutes. Meanwhile, what we got going on here? All right, check it out. We got some chicken going on a homemade hibachi there with about five charcoal briquettes. That's what I expect this chicken to be done a whole lot sooner so we can grub out on some wonderful seasoned chicken. I put some Kinder black sauce on there, black uh, seasoning, which is basically salt, pepper, and garlic herb blend. And we're going to make a little bit of a taco out of this. I may probably throw some Kinders on that because mm, it's like Frank's, man. It's good on everything. Don't leave. You ain't gonna wanna miss the taste test on this good stuff. Oh yeah, we're gonna blister us a big old banana pepper to go with these bad boys. All right, we're gonna give this thing a turn, make sure it's getting even all the way around. So what you do is you turn one one way, one the other. We'll turn it 180 like that. Now we'll turn the lid the other direction. Just like that. Now, give it about another 20 minutes. No peeking, cooking, not looking. Hey, it's time to give this chicken a try. It's getting dark out here, so we turn the lights on. You can hear all my noisy neighbors buzzing. You guys get any cicadas this year? And I don't know why, I got a strange hankering for Fritos. We're going to definitely get down on some Fritos and chicken. But that is the perfect size for a piece of chicken. 
a little bit of Kinder's, doing the Frito Frisky stuff. Couple of Fritos. <laughs> and let's get a piece of this chicken. Hmm. Can you see that? Pull that skewer out. <laughs> I love cooking on charcoal. That charbroiled taste. That chicken is some kind of tender too, man. Who'd have thunk it? We can make a hibachi out of four fire bricks and some five charcoal briquettes. Mmm. Can't forget my homegrown banana pepper. 81 year old dad grew these this year. I'm dropping about, ooh, that's hot. Ooh. It's fire hot. <laughs> Spicy hot. Best of both worlds. So the person who told me to give this a try with Fritos, you get an A plus. You knock it out of the park. I wonder what else kind of crazy flammable that we're eating every day. I love blistered peppers over a hot fire. It actually makes them kind of sweet. It grew so many pe peppers. We're going to pickle a bunch in a different video, but make sure you watch that. You know what? How would you like to have some pickled eggs? Go in the comments and let me know if you want me to make you some pickled eggs or show you how to. Man, they are good. What about mustard flavored pickle eggs? Yes or no? Mustard flavored pickle eggs? Somebody gotta say yeah to that, right? <clears throat> Been 40 minutes. We turned it at 20 and 20 more. Let's take a look inside and see what's happening. And you know, I used to have a hook that worked great for picking up this lid, and someone borrowed it. So if you're the person who borrowed that, you know. Feel free to put in the comments who, who borrowed this thing. I guess I'm going to have to make another one because I think it's a few thousand miles away now. But that's okay. I still love you. Oh, gosh. You smell a vision, man. You guys cannot believe what that smells like. I smelled cinnamon the second I cracked it open. Yeah, we've got a few more minutes to go. It is definitely bubbling and doing this thing, but we're not ready yet. I'm mouse water. I don't want to wait. All right, people, we're taking this cobbler off. I got us a spoon in a bowl. I got one for me and one for you. Let's just go ahead and sit this. <laughs> you smell that? Man, tell me what. You know what else I got us? I got us some, got, got to have us some Villa ice cream. You see that peach cobbler, people? Steaming hot. Beautiful. Got some cinnamon on that. That right there. Just the right consistency of the cobbler. And it hadn't even cooled off yet. When you let it sit a little bit, it'll, it'll kind of just uh, come together. But that is not doughy, not burnt. Beautiful. Peach cobbler. To smother it in some real vanilla ice cream. Oh man. Don't you want a bite of this? I do. Mm. Boy. Mm. That takes you way back. That's it. This was a fun cook. It got dark on us. You know what? Check out this video right here.